I think like now more than ever, it's time for artists to take stock of what am I putting out there? And how is this shaping people? And do I feel like whatever it is that I'm doing, selling, however I'm presenting, if I genuinely knew that that was gonna imprint on someone and become what they are or what they do, how would I feel about that? Would I feel good about that? Do I feel like I'm actually admitting and transferring good ideas, good values, um, and the things that I think are so important these days, you know, am I teaching empathy? Am I teaching understanding? Am I, am I teaching interconnectedness? And I think that figuring that out comes kind of from figuring out your why. Welcome to the Tea On, where we sip tea and we talk about things, preferably things that matter. Uh, every time I have this this show, another session, I try to talk about things that I think hold weight and that matter in our social climate and our political climate, whatever the case may be. And I think the conversation that I'm going to have today really falls in line with what it means to be human right now, especially in 2020. So I'm so excited. And I'm so excited to be having this conversation with somebody just as bright and as luminous as you, Miss Shana Rose. And I'm definitely going to let you, uh, and I say this every time, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Uh, but I will say that you are just a woman of so many trades. I mean, like songwriting and producing and singing. But um, above all else, you also identify as like a social action artist, which is something that we're definitely going to dive into today. But I'll let you take the lead. Let the people yeah. know who you are. <laughs> well, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here and thrilled also to be talking about things that matter because I think that that's so, so important. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Shana Rose yes. and um, a lot of people know me from my starring role on Nickelodeon's hit music series, The Fresh Beat Band. I played the original Marina. Um, yes. But what a lot of people are starting to learn about me is that I'm also a songwriter and a producer. Um, and I've been you know, singing, acting, dancing, performing since I was eight years old and um, I just, I can't ever stop. It's just like, that's, yeah. that's my life. Um, so yeah, I've done, I've done quite a bit of different things, a lot of variety throughout the entertainment industry. But the thing that uh, I think keeps me in it is that I think creators have incredible influence right. um, socially and to sort of move culture. And that has sort of become my mission as an artist. And that's the, the majority of the work I'm trying to do now. Yes, absolutely. And that honestly is like the most beautiful segue into the first question that I had, because I think that um, there's like a certain level of responsibility that I think is sort of starting to come with having a platform. And I think I'm seeing more and more artists step into that responsibility. So I wanted just to know your perspective on like the importance that playing a social role has when you are an influencer, when you do have a platform or, you know, an audience? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it kind of comes down to a lot of basic psychology and sociology, right? Like when we watch people and in particular, when we admire people, it is our instinct to emulate them and right. to right to like recreate whatever it is that they're doing. We want to be like them. And so I think that, yeah, there's an incredible responsibility that, you know, in the past, I've heard a lot of artists, whether it's performers, actors, singers, doesn't matter. They kind of have, they kind of shirked away from that in the past, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I don't have a social responsibility. I'm really just here to entertain people. Right. But, but it's kind of like being in denial a little bit. I think when I hear artists say that, because I'm like, but wait, like, look at all these little kids who are dressed like you and who act like you and they're clearly emulating you. So there is a connection. We do have to somewhat be, I think, aware of that as influencers and as artists. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think like now more than ever, it's time for artists to take stock of what am I putting out there? And how is this shaping people and do I feel like whatever it is that I'm doing, selling, however I'm presenting, if I genuinely knew that that was gonna imprint on someone and become what they are or what they do, how would I feel about that? Would I feel good about that? Do I feel like I'm actually admitting and transferring good ideas, good values, 
Um, and the things that I think are so important these days, you know, my teaching empathy, am I teaching understanding, am I, am I teaching interconnectedness? And I think that figuring that out comes kind of from figuring out your why. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, I could go, I could go even no, further, but I want to let you ask questions. So I don't want to dive into that necessarily yet. But yes, I think we have a tremendous responsibility. Yes, absolutely. And I will circle back to the why thing, because I think that that's huge. But you brought yeah. up so many incredible points. And I think that more and more artists these days, I think it's sort of dawning on them that there is, like I said, that level of responsibility and the thing about it is that I think that also entails being more human and being more vulnerable and showing more of themselves, which I think in like, just in pop culture, like maybe in the early 2000s and before it, it was very much like this wall between the artist and their audience and like very much a facade. And I think right now, especially with social media, there's, there's a humanizing thing that's happening, which I, I'm really grateful for. And I, I wanted your perspective on the idea that like obviously with social media, I mean media in general plays such a huge role in how kids, you know, like they'll mirror it and stuff. And so do you think that it's been helpful or maybe perhaps that it's held us back? Because there are a lot of like positive and negative components, I think, to social media. Of course, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of overstimulation that can happen and comparing yourself to false images, but then also a lot of awareness comes from it. So what's been your experience with that? Oh gosh, well, yeah. you know, like anything, it's a balance, you know, mm. everything comes with goods and bads, everything. There's nothing in like, that's the, um, that's the makeup of the universe, right? It's light and dark, and day and night. And duality, honey, yes. Yes, yeah, duality, exactly. So like, we're never gonna escape that. Everything that's created is gonna have some good aspects and some bad aspects. And, and it's our job to kind of find the happy medium between the two. Um, but I mean, personally for me, really social media has been extremely difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to really not be a fan of it. And it's actually right. been hard hard for me to sort of get involved and participate on a few levels. Yeah. One is um, I'm a highly sensitive person and an empath. So when I watch a lot of the things, right, that, that we're yeah. seeing um, anytime, like anything that I watch, even if it's a movie that I watch, it doesn't even have to be real. Just when we talk oh. about media in a broad scope, Same. I'm very affected by that. So I try to stay away from like a lot of violent movies or a lot of dark movies or anything that I feel like sort of clouds my ability to just move forward each day with, with optimism and positivity. Like I try to be a guardian of my spirit and of my mind, right? And so I think on social media, that's something we all have to be aware of. Like you have to be a guardian of yourself and know how much can you take? Like how much can you handle and how much do you have to pull back? And each person has to make that individual choice for themselves. But then I think there's the other side of it, which is like, we have such an ability, you're right, to like show vulnerability, to show authenticity, to show the truth of what's going on in the world around us, um, to bring to light things that maybe people don't know, uh, you know, are happening or aren't aware of. And I think that social media and those platforms, like where would we be in a sense without that? Totally. Right? Like too much would still be in the dark and a secret. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I try to, I try to just educate myself. I take myself through a little process when I'm watching something, no matter what it is, no matter what. I'm like, who's making this? Why are they making it? Right. How are they benefiting from it? And what am I really gaining from this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? And if I can take myself through that little checklist and I feel good about it, okay, then I'll decide, okay, I'm gonna watch this documentary or I'm gonna follow this person on social media or I'm gonna listen to this artist. But I kind of, I, I pause for a minute first and I make sure that it's in line with what I feel like is gonna be good for me and for the world. And if it's not, I kind of just block it out because I feel like that's power. There's power in being like, no, I'm not following this. I'm not watching this. Absolutely. We don't realize the control that we have over what we're consuming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally. Especially with social media. I mean, you can choose who you follow and you can choose what you're consuming. You're so um, emotionally intelligent, which is incredible because I think a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people should see this and know that I don't know, there, it is so empowering, like you said, to know that you have that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's your own thing. And um, you brought up being an empath, which 
I, I deeply identify with. And you know, one of the questions that I had for you was if there were any internal or external obstacles that you had to overcome when embracing this like authenticity on your platform. But I would imagine that, you know, being an empath is one of those things, you know? Yes. Well, I, I mean, I feel like that is, I feel like my story, I, and most of us, I don't know, you know, maybe some people are so blessed they've had no obstacles. <laughs> really? I don't know who they are. Call me. If you had no obstacles, call me. I want to know your secret. Um, <laughs> no, but I feel like, yes, there's, I've had to overcome a lot of obstacles in my life. I mean, the first was that I grew up in a really conservative, very religious family mm -hmm. um, where self-expression was not necessarily championed. Mm -hmm. You know, it was about following the rules. It was mm -hmm. about fitting in. It was about doing very what you were supposed to do. Right. And, and so I think that, you know, the road to like figuring out why I was even so sensitive or that I was an artist or all the things that were going on with me took a lot longer than maybe some other people. I feel like I'm only just fully stepping into it now. Right. Um, my thirties, because I, you know, it's, it's just taken me a really long time to realize like, oh, I could just be me. <laughs> and like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, but I was really bullied as a kid, very badly. Um, I really never fit in. Um, I, I just had a lot of the, the negative outside influence in my life, just telling me I wasn't gonna be capable, I wasn't gonna be able to do the things that I wanted to do, I wasn't gonna be able to accomplish things. That was for other people. You know, that was for mm -hmm. other people who have whatever, money or connections right. or just the right upbringing, but not for me. Um, so when I moved to LA at 18, I didn't know a single person. And I had to just figure out everything on my own and, you know, how to network, how to find the path to success. Like it was just all me just out there pounding the paint and trying to learn, right, um, right. you know, and then it's, you know, it's interesting because then even sort of after having success, then several years ago, I went through like a really terrible divorce and that mm -hmm. really felt like, oh, this is the end of me and I'm never gonna be able to recover from this. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of wiped out everything that I had worked for, you know? Mm -hmm. From that time I moved to LA at 18 until that moment, it was like, it took away jobs, it took away my home, it took away my community, it took away, you know, so many things. And mm -hmm. again, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna channel this? And I just, I just keep putting it back into art, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and, the sensitivity part, the empathy part, I've had to learn how to almost hone that and harness it like a superpower, mm -hmm. right? Where you're like, okay, well, this sensitivity is really great, but not if it breaks me down to the point where I'm not functional or I'm not helping people, which happened to me all the time. I would just like sink into these really terrible, deep, deep depressions where I just felt like I can't even face the world. It was too hard on me. It was it just felt like way too much. Um, and then I kind of started a lot of uh, a self-help journey, therapy. And um, I, even now I'm like really getting into Tony Robbins and I've read so many books on um, neurosculpting and, you know, shaping the mind, rewiring the mind to where I'm realizing, oh, I just need to take this sensitivity, this empathy superpower, and I need to be able to learn how to uh, what's the what's the X Men character that has the laser eyes? I always akin it to that. Uh, whatever his name is. Either my head. Yeah. You know? <laughs> anyway, you know it's like okay, I've got this crazy power, and I've got to put on the right glasses, right? So that I target that stuff in a way like I am my art now, where I'm like, okay, I know I'm passionate about this. So rather than it being debilitating where I can't get out of bed, let me write a song about it. Let me help someone with it. Right. Let me about it right so it's like channeling those obstacles what we've overcome the lessons and our gifts really into helping other people oh a hundred. the breakthrough yes and so much of our of our life experience is a product of how we choose to perceive it you know what i mean so like when you have like that dark night of the soul moment that you've gone through i think you really were able to sort of in any form just like reconnect with what your mission was because i think through healing through your art you're healing yourself and that's incredible and i'm sure because like you said you, you got bullied when you were younger 
I would imagine that with having a, a younger audience and being able to work with kids, maybe doing that inner child healing helped heal them and vice versa, you know what I mean? Which also, another segue, leads me to the question that being on Nickelodeon and having a younger audience watching you, is there something specific that you really want to convey to this younger generation? Because I think that they are unlike any generation that has been here and that is to come. And I am I have this like weird protection over them that I, I, I want to, especially because they're walking into like a world of social media and a world of digital age and you know. So yeah, is there anything specific, you know, with so many kids watching you that you really want them to take from your story and your art? Yeah, yeah I mean, I've, I've, sorry, I don't know that there's a phone going off behind no, me. No, 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 no. So there you go. Um, Mercury's in retrograde, nothing. <laughs> There you go. You can always blame Mercury in retrograde. Always. Um, so, you know, I think the thing I want to convey the most, honestly, is about authenticity and is about being yourself. Yes. Because I think that, you know, I remember when the app Facetune came out and oh, there were just like sponsored ads for it everywhere. And I felt immediately terrified because I thought, wow, this is reinforcing the idea that you're not good enough the way you are. And I think more than any other time before, you're right, we have this beautiful generation who like, they're all, they really want acceptance and love. They have a greater understanding for each other, I think, and a greater acceptance of each other than any generation before them. Yes. And yet, at the same time, I think they're being bombarded with messages more than any other generation. Absolutely. Before, right? Of like, you need to be popular. You need to have all these followers. Yeah. You need to look a certain way. You need to be a certain way. You need to present a certain way. And I think I would just encourage them like, you know, take, take a page from a girl who grew up in the 90s. Like, there's something so great about like, stick it to the man, be yourself, be fully authentic, who cares if you're popular. It doesn't mean be a jerk and, you know, have people not like you, but it means like, be fully yourself, you know, yeah. be fully, if you're an artist and, you know, you want to dye your hair pink and wear crazy makeup and wear crazy clothes, like do that. If you're a science nerd and you love, you know, um, getting in a lab or doing experiments and whatever, like fly that flag, like, you know, I think we just, we're afraid to be ourselves because we, you know, we're posturing always like looking around, like what's everybody else doing? Right. And, we can and I just, ourselves for that. Yeah. And I would just give this generation like this, I would wave my magic wand and be like, you can just drop all that and just be you. And don't worry about the numbers or the, or don't, or the face tuning or any of that stuff. Like just be yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That resonates so deeply. It's it's our superpower, really. And aside from talking about it and using your platform to speak up, uh, you teach that by standing in your own authenticity, which is what you are doing. So I just want to thank you for that and encourage any other artist who's watching this. Standing in your authenticity gives permission for anybody who's watching you to do the same. Uh, and that's like, I think, how we will heal communally. But... I do want to circle back to what you were saying about um, the why and, you know, what an artist's why is and how that, you know, sort of what drives them. What is, what is your why? What is it that you really want to change about the world? So, so my why is genuinely um, getting to this deeper emotional place with people yeah. where they feel like they can make changes in their life. Yeah. And you, especially with young people, um, I, I think that I want them, kind of like we were talking about earlier about perception, right? How your perception can change reality. That if you can start, the younger you can start, where you're like, wow, my mind is gonna shape everything. My mindset's gonna shape my story and, and what I am able to accomplish in my life and how I see everything that happens to me. So I think my why has really become let's, let's rewire together. Like, let's really mm -hmm. look at things authentically together and figure out how can we see this differently? So yeah. a lot of the music that I'm making now is, you know, I always think about 
what is the honesty in this message? What's the honesty in this song that if somebody actually took a minute and sat down and read the lyrics, they would be like, oh, okay, I really see. I really see how she's trying to wake me up to something or how she's waking up to something or mm -hmm. how I could maybe see this situation differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I never, ever, ever almost anymore sit down and write a song that's just about like, oh, hey, so like, let's write this cool party song or let's write this like right. summer song or like, that's not me. I'm not that artist. I, I, right. I think that has its place. I'm just not good at that. Cause I'm like, but I don't, I don't really have a reason to make that song. So I don't feel like I'm giving anything, right? Right. So I think as artists, like we have to like really dig down to that, to that why, like deeper and deeper and deeper. And I think at the, at the very, very core of me, I don't want people to feel pain. Like mm -hmm. I have felt so much pain in my life mm -hmm. being such a sensitive person. And I think I, I want people to either hear a painful song and relate so that it alleviates some of their pain or want them to hear a joyous song and be elevated and have a moment, a break from that pain. But mm -hmm. I think everything at the core is, is me just being like, let's get out of pain let's have more love and peace with each other you know let's make the world a better place and that's become my whole why yeah and you're doing it boldly and unapologetically which trying trying my best yes and that i mean i don't know whoever's watching this when they're watching it but if you're watching it soon then you'll know that right now we're what i think to be like just a revolution we're in the middle of a civil revolution civil rights revolution um amidst many other things, a global awakening, I'm hoping. Uh, and so I think we all sort of have a duty as a human um, to play our role in this revolution. And, you know, for many people, that's a physical role. It's a financial role. It's an emotionally supportive role. You know, for me, I think it's really important that I use my voice and I use my platform and that's my role. And for you, it's, it's, a, a combination of all those things, but B, just like your art is really, really, really going to help heal and push us forward into this place that I hope that we are going towards of like love and acceptance and unity and compassion for ourselves and each other. So I'm so grateful for that and to see it. And I do want to know more about what you're working on or what it is that, you know, you want people to know that is next from Shader Rose. Yeah, I mean, so... I'm going to be releasing a single uh, called Someone Loves You in the next um, couple of months and mm -hmm. it's gonna, and there's going to be a video that goes along with it with a bunch of fans that have sent in um, footage that I'll be, you know, cutting into it. And again, it, it came out of what we're talking about. It was like, mm -hmm. wow, we're having this crazy global pandemic yeah. and um, people are feeling so isolated and yeah. some so lonely and, you know, I've got friends losing jobs. You know, people are financially in a very, very bad situation. I have so many young friends because I, I actually do a lot of kid friends from, you know, just everything that I do. And yeah. they're, they're sad that they can't go to school. They're sad oh. they can't see their friends. I mean, this has been really hard on people. So and difficult. So I, kind of, I wrote this song um, as like a tribute to, you know, just get back to what matters, which is that somebody loves you. And even if that somebody is, is me and you feel like it's nobody else, you know, I'm that someone who loves you, but that we, we get distracted again by like all of the things sometimes like this idea that again, we need to be popular or successful or rich or famous or whatever it is. And it's like, that's not what counts at the end of the day, what counts is love and the, and relationships. Yeah. And I think you're right. The awakening that we're having right now, this global awakening is like, oh, we, we all just have to get connected again. And, right? Like, and care about each other. And so like, that's, that's what this song is about. Um, so I'm super excited to be putting that out. And then just in general, on my Instagram um, account, I'm just trying to now essentially perform and release yeah. music, even if it's not streaming, but right there on my Instagram. And my, my, um, my account is at the Shana Rose. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, when the protests started and whatever, I was like, okay, this, like you were saying, okay, what do I, what am I going to do? 
how am I going to get my voice out there? What am I going to say? Right. So I released a bunch of songs, you know, just right mm -hmm. on Instagram, live performances. I didn't want to wait to have to mm -hmm. upload on Spotify, none of that garbage. I was just like, let's get this out now, right. you know, so that people know I'm supporting these movements and supporting yeah. these things. Um, so yeah, a lot of what I'm going to be doing is just going to be on my Instagram account. Right. Uh, put, you know, releasing these songs and putting out these messages and doing things like this, like, I have one um, post on my Instagram that's just a call to action for artists. Like, guys, get out there. Use yep. your voice. Use your platform. Make stuff. Like, push the, you know, let's get Black Lives Matter. We, we need to keep the momentum going. Use your art to keep this momentum going. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, um, uh, yeah. that, that's, that's where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing in the next, you know, at least till the end of the year. Yes, and thank you, and thank you for that rigor because, I mean, like you said, of course, you know, like this song that's coming out is going to be so healing and it's going to be so unifying, uh, but there are a lot of eyes on your Instagram, and I mean, when I was going through it, I was just like, it was so empowering to see you um, just be so fiery in the way you were like, hello, like, this is a moment, and, you know, I think of right now, it's a lot of people who are stepping into their power as influencers, this could be a whole other interview and I'll probably do an interview on this, honestly, but there's like this method of like toxic positivity of like, it's okay guys, because love and light. And like, I, I it really <laughs> impressed to me that you're like, yes, love is rooted in all of this, but also like shit is going down. So <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's like the fiery redhead or something in me, but I'm like, people yes. do something. Let's do something, you know? Yes. Um, because you know, I'm a, super action oriented person right so you're right like love and light is beautiful and i do yeah. believe that like emitting positive healing ener energy to people is is so important but oh. like come on when you think about it like when we think about it on a micro scale like with our friends like mm -hmm. if we really have some things going on what do we want our friends to do we want them to show up we mm -hmm. don't just want them to send us a text being like oh sorry this is happening to you love and right. light like no we're like we want you to come over. We want you to take us out for a coffee. We want you to have a conversation with us. We want you to back us up. We want you to, you know, whatever it is, but we want like real action. So I think that that's why that, you're right. That's kind of like toxic or annoys people. Cause it's like, oh, come on, man. Like right. show up, you know, show up. So I show think that that's yeah. kind of the difference. And it's, it's right now it's time to show up. Absolutely. Just like, I mean, like we were saying earlier about how real healing and, and, um, just like growth and purpose comes from those dark moments and comes from that suffering. I think that real love and light and healing comes from when we are passionate and when we have that drive, when we embrace the struggles and the sadness that we are all to some degree experiencing right now. So yeah, it's just, it's so powerful that you are really stepping up to the plate and using your platform and using your art. And I just can't be, I, I, I feel like I'm speaking for the collective and everyone that's watching me when I say that I'm so grateful for it. And thank you for doing it and being you. And also just thank you for sitting down with me today and even extending your voice even further. Um, Cause it really means the world. And there's a lot Absolutely. of- Absolutely. So my, so my pleasure, so my pleasure. Absolutely. So are there any last final things that you want to say? Anything that you want the people to know? Anything that you want to add in? You know, I, I think the, my last final message, I guess if yes. I had to leave you with something, is that you know change change starts right here mm. and again i think that because we do have access to so many people and, and social media and all these things we want to make change about it being out there you know it's about someone else or some group or some whatever but really it's right here and we have to find the places in our own life in our own relationships and our own families and even with ourselves where when we are um targeting others for their lack of kindness or understanding you know find in yourself where are you lacking kindness where are you lacking understanding mm -hmm. and because really if we all did that if each one of us was like where can i change where can i bring my best that's when we're going to see that global collective shift that you're talking about and and i can't wait i hope that it happens and i'm um, I really, I'm trying to look at myself right now so deeply, so many ways around, you know, privilege and, you know, things I've experienced and where I've come from and, and how can I help and what can I change? What do I need to keep opening my eyes to? Right. And I just think, I think that's the answer right here. Right here. 
That's it. Yeah. That's what we got. That's what we got for you. <laughs> and that's incredible. Yes, be the change that you want to see. So yes, absolutely. Thank you for standing in your power, for pursuing your purpose. I encourage anybody who's watching this, if you feel like you have a soul mission on this earth, please follow it boldly and unapologetically and just be your authentic self. I think that was like the all-encompassing lesson of this of this whole conversation. Yes. So thank you, yes. Messina. You are um, radiant and incredible. Uh, and thank you to anyone who's watching. And you can follow yes. me on Instagram at Jazz and Kyleen, lalialuna.tv, sign up for my newsletter. And um, yeah, that's all. Love to everyone. <laughs>